just to silence their phones. Um, once again, I'd like to welcome everybody. For those of you that don't know, Jordan Rubin was very sick, and through nutrition, he was basically able to restore his health. And we are very excited and very lucky to have him come and share his experience here with us and his knowledge of supplements and nutrition. So, without further ado, I'd like to welcome Jordan Rubin. Glad you could make the trip. This is seminar. We're, we're arguing whether it's seminar number 92 or 93 for the year. So I am entering the home stretch and I'm excited about it. But for you, it's not 92 or 93, it's number one. So we always rise to the occasion when we get a chance to share a powerful message that can be life changing with folks. You know, about 15, 16 years ago, I had a decision to make. I had already visited 69 medical experts, conventional medical doctors, sought natural cures from around the world. I was trying to get better, overcome the 19 diseases I'd been diagnosed with, Crohn's disease or inflammatory disease of the bowel, symptoms of rheumatoid arthritis, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, extreme anemia. I had fungal infections, viral infections, bacterial infections parasitic infections, kidney problems, liver problems, heart problems, prostatitis, urinary tract infections, but most troubling was the fact that at a height of nearly six foot one, my weight had plummeted to 104 pounds, and I could only get around in a wheelchair. During this time, I realized that the one asset that I owned, that I took for granted, my health, was now gone. And understanding that at the age of 19 and then 20 is challenging. We're all immortal teenagers one day, but then for me, I'd lost everything I'd known. My health was gone, and soon my friends were gone. My parents' finances were gone. And ultimately, I watched as my family and loved ones suffered, and I felt like it was my fault. Their heart would break seeing their son or grandson or brother struggle the way that I did. Those two years seemed like one long nightmare of having surgery done in my digestive tract without anesthesia. Oftentimes I would walk from the bedroom to you know, 10 feet away to my parents' closet. Many times I wouldn't make it, I'd wake up with my glasses broken face down, having blacked out due to my zero iron level for 18 months. I only left the house to travel to see those doctors and health experts. They always would promise me that they would help me. They'd help everybody else. People come to see them from all over the world. And after I leave, I would always hear that, well, you're a bad patient, or he's really depressed. One time I had gone to Germany for venous flytrap IV infusions. Everything sounds good when you're desperate. So in Germany, I was there for eight weeks and didn't know the language. My mom was with me some, but she had to go back. She was a school teacher. So when she left me, my day consisted of going downstairs to get IVs in the clinic where we stayed. And my veins were so tapped, I was so dehydrated that they were drawing IVs from my little toe, which I didn't think were any veins in there. I would go up to my room after shivering or seizing for about an hour and a half to a room that was about five foot tall in the ceilings, and I'm over six, so that already doesn't work. I was really in lots of pain, so they gave me tincture of opium, which is kind of the old day painkillers, which are less toxic, but less effective. I slept most of the day, but when I was awake, I tried to watch television a little bit, and there was only one channel that had English programming, and during that entire time of my stay, they pretty much covered the OJ trial 24-7. I think anyone would be depressed at that point. After trying everything, I sat on the telephone talking to a man in California who told me that he knew why I was sick and better yet, how I could get well. He said that if I followed a health plan that's based on the Bible, proven through history and confirmed by science, in three months I'd be working out on the beach in San Diego. Here I was, sitting in a wheelchair in West Palm Beach, Florida, Sounded pretty good. So I heard what he said, and I heard that he had a plan or an idea of how to get me well, but it took a lot more than listening. It took action. I had to get in my wheelchair on an airplane, travel 2,300 miles across the country, to live with a man I never met, following principles I'd never heard of, 
And you probably can assume by the rest of the story that it worked. Forty days after being in San Diego, following a diet and lifestyle that I now call the Maker's Diet, I got well. Not only did I get well, but I didn't get my old life back, which I always wanted, prayed for, hoped for, but I got a new life, a, a mission, if you will, to see the health of this nation and world transformed one life at a time. And that mission has taken me around the world, seems to be several times, and I've had the privilege to share this message with over 300,000 people live in settings like this or larger. I've had an opportunity to write 19 books on health and wellness. I started an organization out of my parents' friend's garage with my dad's credit card called Garden of Life. I've been able to share this message on five continents and 44 states. But tonight, for you, it's the first time. And some of you are invited by somebody. Maybe you're here because you have a health challenge or your child does or your spouse does, or maybe you're one of the fortunate people who are pretty healthy and want to learn how to stay that way or get even healthier. But I want to encourage you to not simply listen. Listening is something you're basically forced to do. You're here and I like to talk, so that's a perfect remedy for listening. But I want to encourage you to take action. And you're not going to have to travel 2,300 miles in a wheelchair to get the results you're looking for. You might have to take five steps and Maybe ask a question or talk to one of the staff or one of my team afterwards and go over some of the things we talked about and leave armed and ready to win your battle for extraordinary health. I often think of what my life would be had I missed that opportunity. Had I treated the 70th health expert the way that I treated the 54th or the 63rd or the 12th, Maybe I was already fed up. Maybe I'd heard it all before. Maybe I was jaded. Maybe I wasn't willing to take a risk. But I did. And now I'm here as a result. And many other people have been blessed to get back to health because of one man's desire to help a young guy who he never met with principles that he'd learned. So tonight, I'm going to share some things with you. And some of you are going to take notes and I already want to apologize because I talk really fast and use a lot of words that you probably can't spell to make me sound smart. <laughs> Much of the information that you're going to hear is found in our latest edition of Extraordinary Health Magazine, which is either in your lap or you're sitting on. It's got Suzanne Summers on the front and a excuse me, it's got Olivia Newton John on the front and a devastatingly handsome young man in a classic car on the back. <laughs> now I need to say this. When I sat in the car, it wasn't pink. They made it pink to match Olivia's outfit. I would not have seen the pink was blue. Trust me. I've always wanted to play Danny and Grease. They figure, you know, since it's my company, they might as well give me a second front cover, if you will. A lot of great articles and information is in Extraordinary Health Magazine. Great coupons. We publish this quarterly, and one of you are holding perhaps our 10 millionth copy that we've given away free for the last three years. We've given away nearly two and a half million books to health food stores nationwide and worldwide. Our goal is really to empower extraordinary health. We create great nutritional products and functional foods, but education is critical. Because if I can encourage you and teach you how to eat and how to live, how to utilize nutritional supplements, then I've done my job. As they say, give a man uh, a fish and he'll eat for a day, a day. Teach him how to fish and he'll eat for a lifetime. So tonight I'm going to teach you how to fish. How to fish for extraordinary health, that is. But before we get started, I want to let you know that extraordinary, the word, has a meaning. We might throw it around quite a bit, but it means better than the rest. Cream of the crop. Top of the heap. It means you've separated yourself from the average individual. You are now not ordinary, extraordinary, or even abnormal to some. And let's face it. Being normal in health in America is pretty crummy. One out of three men will be diagnosed with cancer in their lifetime, and one out of two women. One out of two adults with heart disease. Tens of billions of asthmatics, diabetics, autoimmune diseases on the rise. One out of a hundred children or less that are born today will be diagnosed with an autism spectrum disorder. Ordinary is no longer okay. It stinks. It's terrible. But if you're extraordinary, that means that you are not a statistic anymore. You don't have to be one of the two that gets heart disease or one of the two and a half that gets cancer. But in order to be extraordinary, 
You have to take extraordinary effort. I'm not going to tell you anything that I'm going to share with you is easy, but it is simple, which means there is a straightforward path to do it. You don't have to go to 70 doctors. You don't have to go around the world. You don't have to go to Germany, watch the OJ trial or any of that. But what you do need to do is take action. And to have extraordinary health, there's nothing greater than that on the planet. It took a devastating illness and losing years of my life to realize that. But I did vow that if I was able to get well during that illness, that I would help just one person overcome disease, or better yet, avoid it, then it will have all been worth it. Just maybe the reason I got sick was for one of you. People ask me all the time, why did you get sick? And they expect me to talk about pesticides or vaccinations or gluten. But I prefer to say the reason I got sick is so that someone else could stay well or get well. I didn't plan on it. I wouldn't have chosen it. But when I was in the circumstance, I could see that. There's a good saying I've heard that God doesn't waste our pain. So if you're in a circumstance that's, that's bad, perhaps you're to conquer it and share with someone else who's in the thick of it. I always said that if the doctor that I was visiting had been through what I was going through and had overcome, I would have felt much more comfortable when they explained all the things that were going to be poked and prodded in various areas of my body that I would prefer to keep private, if you know what I mean. But I've been through it. And if you listen and apply and take action to some of the principles and keys we're going to learn, maybe you don't have to. Or if you're in a situation, I promise you, while I can't say you'll be well tomorrow, I can guarantee that if you will follow these age-old principles, your tomorrow can be better than today, next week better than this week, next month better than this month. And instead of a New Year's resolution January 1st, maybe a New Year's revolution where a complete turnaround in your life is in order. These six keys to extraordinary health I'm going to share are taken from my experience, my study, and gleaned from some of the men and women who really founded the modern natural health movement. Names like Paul Bragg and Bernard Jensen, Victor Earl Irons and Adele Davis, Norman Walker, Weston Price, many others that you'll learn about, Edward Howell. These men and women started natural health principles and concepts when it wasn't popular, when no one knew about it, when they were considered crazy. Those names may not sound like much to you, but these individuals started the first health food store, brought over the first vegetable juicers in the United States, found a weed in their yard that was wheatgrass, put it through a press, and said it could be healthy for us to drink. The father of digestive enzymes and some of the best research and information we have came from them. So I'm not inventing anything or reinventing anything. I'm just here to share the information that has been gleaned and gathered and taught by the best and the brightest in our great natural health movement. And you can be a part of that as well. Key number one to extraordinary health. It starts with the gut. That digestive system that you prefer not to hear much from, that goes from your mouth to the other end, holds life and death in it. At least most of us believe that. As early as, or as late as 1910, major medical texts showed that what goes on in your gut and toxicity that escapes to the rest of your body could be implicated in 90% of illness or 90% of health. From breaking your arm, requiring nutrients and compounds to heal, to an ulcer, it all is governed by the digestive tract. In fact, if I could choose a disease, it would be the one that I had, because through it, I have more to offer to virtually everybody. Digestion, elimination, and detoxification are critical for everyone. Now, I, growing up, as many other young boys, always wanted to be a superhero. You know, you want to have super strength, leap tall buildings with a single bound, x-ray vision. And I guess, in a way, I've grown up to be a superhero. I just never realized his name would be Bowel Boy. <laughs> Because for the last 10, 15 years, I've discussed people's bowel habits. I, I love when people say, Jordan, I don't want to embarrass you, but look, there's no but that can embarrass me anymore. <laughs> Each and every day I hear about things and I thought, man, I thought I've, I thought I've heard it all, but now there's this. Folks, the digestive tract is something we prefer not to talk about, think about, or hear about, but watch TV. Go to a grocery or drugstore, health food store, and see the aisles of digestive products. This is the root system of our body, and we got major problems. When it comes to digestion and the gut, you need to understand that more of your immune system resides in your gut than anywhere in your body. More 
oxidative stress, what you take antioxidants for, goes on in the gut. And more brain power and brain chemicals are produced in the digestive tract. If I ask you to come up and finish this seminar, where are you going to have butterflies? In your head? No. In your stomach. This information is going to further the concept that this is where health starts. So what I want to share with you is four steps to achieve ongoing digestion and detoxification health. Number one, cleanse regularly. Now cleansing itself is kind of a scary word for some people because many of you may think that I'm going to talk about drinking lemon juice and cayenne pepper for 40 straight days. Some of you have images of that 1992 Saturday Night Live commercial for Colon Blow cereal and think you're going to spend a week in the bathroom finally reading your Encyclopedia Britannica. Some of you think that I'm going to recommend that cleanse that you may have heard about where you drink apple juice for three days, eight ounces of olive oil before you go to bed, lay on your left side and hope that green pellets appear in the toilet in the morning. I go to bed most nights hoping they won't. Some of you think, all right, go ahead, talk about enemas, colonics, or even coffee enemas, and I'm not going to do that either. However, coffee enemas have been a part of medicine since the early 1900s. In fact, when I wrote my second book, Restoring Your Digestive Health, I created a jingle and ode to coffee enemas. It went something like this. The best part of waking up is Folgers in your, but it wasn't cup. And for some reason, the publisher thought Folgers might not want their top-selling product to be associated with that vehicle of administration, you know what I mean. Folks, cleansing is not a no-pain, no-gain proposition. It's not miserable. It's not going to require you to stay home from school or work. But cleansing is a jump start to a new level of health. When you cleanse, you're not as much dumping all the toxins you've accumulated in three months or six months or a year. You are facilitating the two principles of health, and there only are two. Number one, get the good in, nutrients in the cells. Number two, get the bad out, waste out of the body. And this isn't a seven-day project. It's daily, and you need to jumpstart your way to do it. At the end of the seminar, I'm going to have a question and answer session. A lot of you might think of asking how to improve your energy or your skin. Maybe your immune system. Maybe you want to lose weight. Don't be surprised if I consistently say, start with a cleanse. It's a starting point. But how should we cleanse and how often? I recommend three times a year, excuse me, four times a year, every three months for seven days. So quarterly. And we like to do it similar to seasonal changes. January, April, July, and October. This is a great time. And just like spring cleaning, many of us need to rearrange some things in our health. When you cleanse, you want to avoid bad things, chemicals, junk food. You want to facilitate a time where you can get more rest, get more sleep, get more sun, eat healthier foods, get hydrated, be a little less stressed, give more hugs and kisses, smile more. It's focusing on you. The great men and women of natural health that I referred to earlier all agreed that cleansing was critical. And they all believed that the foods to consume during a cleanse were primarily raw foods. Raw foods that are uncooked, untreated, unadulterated are ideal for facilitating cleansing. Now you don't have to eat all raw foods, but more raw foods, fruits, vegetables, their juices, fats like avocado and coconut. Some people recommend consuming foods like animal foods, even raw dairy, if you're a fan of that. I certainly am, if you can find it. Eating raw foods predominantly is critical. But as I surveyed health food stores, I wanted to help people give them a coach for cleansing, a tutor, if you will, a little bit of extra help. And I thought, hey, if raw foods are critical for cleansing, why shouldn't we have a raw cleansing system? And there wasn't one, so Garden of Life created one. It's called Raw Cleanse. Simple to remember. If you're one of those people that want to really fully experience a cleanse, eating mostly raw foods, getting hydrated, rest and sleep is great, but taking raw cleanse along with it for seven days will not only help you cleanse your digestive tract from top to bottom and your cells from the inside out with nutrients and compounds you won't find in any other product, but it'll do it in a way that's raw with foods, not too harsh, but easy, 
and even enjoyable cleansing experience. In a couple of days, you'll feel lighter and better, and foods that are healthy will taste good to you, and cravings might even disappear as well. Going on a cleanse four times a year is a great way to start. Second step to ongoing digestion and detoxification health is to boost your probiotics. Who in this room knows what a probiotic is? Raise your hand. That's a lot more than used to. I started giving seminars 14 years ago, and in my first seminar, I asked the same question, and only two people raised their hand. Well, there were only three in the audience, but you, know, you probably know the picture. Probiotics are simply defined as the good germs. A lot of us grew up hearing germ and automatically thinking it was bad. Good germ was an oxymoron, but we know that good germs exist on our skin and, of course, inside our body. I call probiotics our internal army, our special forces. When they are there in good numbers and working for you, you are simply much healthier. Problem is, while everybody has probiotics, virtually no one has enough, and I'm going to talk about that for the next few minutes. Probiotics are your defense against the outside world. But how do you make sure you have enough? Well, first of all, how do you know if you need more? Number one, if you were born via C-section. Now, I know by the looks of many in this room that we've all been alive for a little while, but you may not realize that in the next decade, C-section or cesarean section births will outnumber normal births. That's a problem because anytime you go against creation, you're going to lose. That's your initial chance to get probiotics is through being born. Number two, if you weren't breastfed or weren't breastfed long enough, you need a probiotic boost. Number three, and probably most serious, if you've ever consumed once or applied topically an antibiotic, that's one dose, you need a probiotic boost. Let me pause and explain. If you have a hundred roses in a garden, and you decide to uproot 25 of them, not chop the top off, uproot 25 of them. But yet you water the rest, 75, you let it get sunshine, you fertilize it, whatever. What are you going to have? 75 roses. You're not going to have the 25 roses back unless you replant the seeds. Antibiotics. Remove the seeds. Remove the probiotics from your gut permanently. They need to be put back. If you've ever consumed one bite of non-organic, conventional meat, poultry, or eggs, or farm-raised fish, or one sip of conventional dairy, having as many as 80 antibiotic residues, you need a probiotic boost. If you ever consumed chlorinated water, chlorine kills good germs, and where do you think all the antibiotics and medications we take into our animals end up? I didn't mention this to you, but about a year and three months ago, I fulfilled a, a decade-long dream of mine and became a beyond organic farmer and rancher. I even have a cowboy hat, but my team tells me that it, I got it in Aspen and it doesn't count, so I got to work on getting a real one. We have two springs on our properties, and we decided to get them tested for water quality by a sophisticated lab. Based on those results, I can tell you with near certainty what the previous owner of the property had in his medicine cabinet five years ago. Folks, we got some challenges here, and our gut takes the brunt of that. If you consume lots of sugars or have in your lifetime, if you've taken medications like oral contraceptives, heartburn medications, anti-anxiety, you need a probiotic boost. If you've ever breathed in toxic air or been mad enough to yell at somebody, you need a probiotic boost. Two ways to get that probiotic boost. Number one, through diet. There are foods that contain probiotics and probiotic nutrients, such as whole milk yogurt, kefir, and raw milk cheeses. You can consume cultured veggies like sauerkraut, kimchi, pickles, pickled ginger. There are beverages like kombucha, kvass, and apple cider vinegar. There's cultured or fermented soy products like miso or natto. All of those give you probiotics and the nutrients needed for your own probiotics to grow. But if you're like me, you probably need more than just probiotic foods. And for most of the last 14 years, and including tonight, before I go to sleep, I have consumed the very same probiotic supplement. It's called Primal Defense Ultra. And Primal Defense Ultra is a formulation that came from the very first product that started Garden of Life. The very same substance that my dad sent me in an envelope 
15 and a half years ago in San Diego, California, when I had tried 30 brands of probiotics and gave up because nothing worked, he begged me to try this compound that gave the healthy nutrients and compounds from soil that was untouched by modern man. I don't know why I agreed after I told him I have never taken a probiotic again, but I did, and I'm so glad I did. Primal Defense Ultra and Primal Defense for Kids for the Little Ones have been a part of mine and my family's health program for a long time, and they still will remain for much longer. Probiotic supplements are critical, but they have to get from the mouth to the other end to work. In Primal Defense, I like to call it the armored tank of probiotics. You can boil the probiotics, you can microwave them, you can explode them, or just yell at them. They're not going to die. They are made to survive because they are from the environment and from our food supply. You'll find a little bit of them on your green <coughs> spinach and other veggies. You just won't find enough. On our ranches, one of our main goals is to build the soil with these very same microorganisms because I can tell you they're not there in sufficient quantities. You don't have to wait for me to be shipping my produce from my ranches in Missouri to the shelves right here at Nature's Outlet. You can begin boosting your probiotics with Primal Defense Ultra, a probiotic diet, and get your internal army back into shape where it needs to be. The third step to digestion and detoxification health is to preserve your enzyme bank account. Folks, you have to live under a pretty large rock not to realize that many people have watched over the last two and a half years as their pension funds, investment accounts, 401ks have taken a nice dip. But there's a bank account in your body that if you saw that and saw the balance there, you'd be even more stressed and upset. Because according to Dr. Edward Howell, who is credited as being the father of digestive enzymes, these tiny proteins that help you digest the food that you eat are only produced by the body in finite amounts. That means we only produce a set amount of them. He likened it to a bank account. Only difference, you can withdraw from this bank account, but you can't make a deposit. The key is, minimize your withdrawals. Dr. Howell believed that the last time you have an enzyme withdrawal is the last time you take your last breath. He also believed that the more your enzyme bank account had in it, the younger and better you felt and looked. Since these enzymes are critical for our health, you should know two things about digestion. Number one, you're not what you eat, you're what you digest. Number two, that which you eat and do not digest can and will be held against you in a court of health. See, when you eat a meal, <clears throat> say it's a big meal, and you only digest half of it, you think the other half disappears? Oh no, it stays in your body for weeks, months, and if you talk to a gastroenterologist, potentially years, breathing toxicity. I don't care how much good food you eat, if you don't digest it, it's not good at all. So when it comes to digestion, we eat, we deal with the normal symptoms of post-meal gas, bloating, indigestion, heartburn. It may be normal, but it doesn't have to happen. It, it doesn't mean it's healthy. I want to share with you four ways you can preserve your enzyme bank account. Number one, this will shock many of you, eat only when hungry. Some of you are thinking back, hunger, yes, it was about 12 years ago on a Tuesday. Folks, in America, we're not hungry anymore, we don't even get pre-hungry. People tell you to eat six times a day, you stoke your metabolism, you're stoking something, all right? Folks, when you're hungry, your body is ready to receive food. I, I know with kids, if your kid says they're hungry and you don't stuff their face immediately, you feel really guilty. Folks, hunger is a good thing. We just don't know what it is anymore. When you're hungry, you can receive and digest food. You can have a wheatgrass smoothie, buckwheat crackers, and millet cereal. And if you're full, you're not going to digest it. Eat only when you're hungry. That is great for a number of things. Number two, and this is another easy but yet overlooked area of health. Chew your food thoroughly. Many of you probably remember being children and having your mom saying something like, Hey, Jordy, you just inhale your food. You swallow it whole. You've got to chew your food. Well, you probably weren't called Jordy because that was my nickname, and please don't call me that because I don't like it very much. 
But you know what I'm saying. Teenagers, uh, adults. And, and this was back in a time when people didn't go through a drive through restaurant, getting fast food, eating a hamburger, drinking a shake, driving with your knees, and text messaging someone all at the same time. I mean, this was you know, in the 80s. We need to chew our food thoroughly. When you see or smell appetizing food, what does your mouth do? Salivates. Well, there's a reason. Your saliva contains an enzyme designed to digest carbohydrates, something else you should know. In my opinion, the cause of digestive problems, mild to severe, is undigested carbohydrates. We'll talk more about that later. Carbohydrate foods that are not digested are what are causing our minor or even severe problems. So an enzyme in your mouth digests carbohydrates. It's called tylen. Don't write it down, man. It starts with a P. <laughs> tylen is a salivary amylase, which breaks down starches into sugars. You want to try an experiment at home, get some whole grain bread or cereal, start chewing it. What tasted bland in the beginning will taste sweet by about the 25th mouthful, because the starches are now easy to digest sugars. Chewing your food is critical for your health. Certainly, was recommended by a young man named Horace Fletcher, who in the early 1900s was diagnosed with Addison's disease, an autoimmune disease of the adrenals. Fletcher was told by doctors there was nothing they could do and he was going to die. He needed to get his affairs in order. He didn't like that, so he decided to study human physiology. And he realized that human beings were designed to chew each bite of food 50 to 100 times. So he set out to chew himself back to health. And according to a major health magazine at the time, he did just that. Not only did he go from being sick and emaciated with a death sentence to being healthy, he spawned a whole group of followers that called themselves Fletcherizers. The only way to get into the club was to chew each mouthful 50 to 100 times. Now you might be thinking, boy, I'm going to close down some restaurants and be a morning dinner date. I promise you, not only is it worth it for your digestion, but you will not weigh as much because... You're not hungry down here, you're hungry here. We simply don't give ourselves a chance to even know that we've eaten anything if we swallow our food whole. Chewing your food thoroughly is a chore in the beginning, but long term it will become a habit. Now there is one thing that we chew too much of, and it's gum. So all at once, everybody who has gum, either swallow or <laughs> stop chewing so that you can convince me you don't have it because this is a confession. Or be brave like that one right there. <laughs> Folks, I know people, and so do you, that are never without gum, that I've never seen without gum. When they wake up in the morning, they get their first piece. When they go to sleep at night, they dump their 37th in the trash. First of all, gum has some junk in it. Unless you get gum here, it's good for you in small amounts. But think about it. If your enzymes are in your mouth, and you're chewing all the time, but your body only equates chewing with getting nutrients, and it creates enzymes, but there's no food, they're kind of washed away, and you're robbing your enzyme bank account, there was a recent study that showed that those that chew gum have more wrinkles. Now, some would like you to think it's because they're working the muscles in their face. But if Dr. Howell was right, it's because they're robbing their enzyme bank account. So you want to cut back on that a little bit. The fourth step for digestion and detoxification health, you've all heard about going green in the environment. I want to encourage you to go green on the inside. One thing... And one thing alone is our top priority at our ranches and farms. To capture the power of the sun in tiny solar panels called blades of grass and leaves of green. Transferring the sun's energy to animals and humans is our primary goal. After all, we don't live off of food's energy, we live off the sun's energy. And it's perfectly transformed and transferred by green plants. Green foods make up the base of a good diet, but not for enough of us. When we talk about being extraordinary, you want to do things that the average person isn't willing to do to make yourself not a statistic, but what I like to say, more than a conqueror. So one thing that I recommend is to consume more green foods. Green foods contain four compounds that most other foods don't measure up to. Minerals to charge your cells, antioxidant enzymes to protect them, protein to build your body, and chlorophyll, the miracle molecule that, that detoxifies and restores better than anything I know. Green foods are critical. And I believe 99.9% .9 of Americans do not get three to five servings a day. You may be one of them. But if you did, 
you would have a 99.9% .9 on Professor Rubin's health quiz. That would make you much more likely to be healthy. I'm going to share with you three quick ways to get green on the inside. Number one, eat salads. Well, wait a minute. Does that mean I have to go in storage and get my salad spinner or start picking out grit and spinach? Not necessarily. You see, many health food stores have these bags of organic greens, and you open them, and they're already washed. You put them in a bowl, you put some healthy dressing and some protein. I used to call it the bachelor salad because that's what I did before I was married. It takes about three minutes if you're slow. That gives you two servings of greens right there. Great for work, great for school, great at home. Number two, juicing greens. Now, I have given 90 plus seminars this year, not exactly sure how many, apparently. But I have only missed three days this year of consuming fresh veggie juice, predominantly green juice. Now, I don't juice every day, but I drink juice every day. Now, would it be better if I juiced every day? Probably, but I know I won't, so I don't. But what I do is I juice, I take unheated honey to preserve the juice, put it in tight-fitting glass jars or stainless steel plant canteens for when I travel. I had green juice this morning. I'm going to have it tomorrow. I'm staying in a residence inn. What's your excuse? Folks, green juices are wonderful, and juicing is something people like to do for about three days. You see, you stay up late one night, you watch TV, and you order a juicer. You get it, and you're excited. You open it up, you go to the health food store, you buy all these veggies, and you're standing at the cash register with 12 stalks of celery, cucumbers, parsley, you've got beets, carrots, and the person checking you out looks and says, wow, look at all those veggies. You must be a juicer. And of course, you say, yep, I'm a juicer, because it's pretty cool to be a juicer. You get home, you juice, tastes good, you feel good, but then you realize in the fine print on the side of the box, what Jack Lane didn't tell you is instructions for cleaning. Go find the oldest toothbrush you have and scrub vigorously for four hours. <laughs> Juicing's not easy, but it's great if you can do it. Therefore, I knew this <clears throat> about 12 years ago, and we created a solution so that you could have juice every day. It's called Perfect Food. It is raw, organic veggie juice in a powder. You mix it in water or juice. It gives you three to five servings of raw, organic fruits and veggies from 35 greens, veggies, and sprouts. If you mix it in water and shake it or stir it and leave it there for hours, it'll look like juice, taste like juice. It is juice. If you will drink perfect food as the first thing that touches your mouth every morning for 30 days, I will guess that on the 31st day, that is what you crave, not something that comes from a pot. Now, don't worry, for some of you, we have capsules if you're more of a wimp. Otherwise, you can consume the straight stuff. Drinking perfect food, green veggie juice, and eating salads every day can help transform your health by getting you green on the inside. Of course, we want you to preserve your enzyme bank account, boost your probiotics, and cleanse four times a year. Key number two to extraordinary health, eat raw nutrients. Well, now it's time that I share with you the vitamin and mineral story you've never heard that will change the way you take them forever. But first, vitamins were discovered by a Polish scientist by the name of Casimir Funk. You see, Dr. Funk was tasked with finding out what was inside food that was invisible to the naked eye. We knew about proteins, carbs, fats, and fiber, the macronutrients, but what inside food made it work? Funk found charged particles, vital amines, as he called them, later named vitamins. The first, vitamin B1, or thiamine, and thus began the great vitamin revolution or as some call it, the great vitamin hoax. Fast forward 80, 90 years. Two recent studies, one showing that older women who consume a regular multivitamin could be at greater risk for breast cancer. Another study that shows all age folks who consume a regular calcium supplement can be at greater risk of heart disease. I know our industry is up in arms, but I am not surprised a bit. Why? Because food is where you get nutrients. Anything away from that is simply an imposter, a fake. But the vitamin revolution began to kick into high gear in the early to mid-1900s when Americans began to move away from their agrarian lifestyles, moving from farm center communities to cities. And every inch, foot, or mile that their food traveled from the farm where it was grown or raised to their mouth, 
they would lose something. And while cancer, heart disease, and diabetes were virtually unheard of at the time, can you believe that, unheard of at the time? Researchers knew that things would change as we were more industrialized and had population booms. So they tasked scientists to look under a microscope at food, find compounds, and go recreate them in laboratories out of chemicals. In fact, you might think the vitamins and minerals that many of you consume get beta carotene from the nice lady juicing carrots in the back. Probably not. In fact, the major suppliers and sources of vitamins and minerals in America are compounds that are byproducts of petroleum, activated sewage sludge, byproducts of the film development industry, and good old-fashioned rock. You don't see that on the label, do you? In fact, if you take vitamins and you see thiamine mononitrate, that is not really a vitamin, that's, well, thiamine is a vitamin combined with a single nitrate. If you see pyridoxine hydrochloride next to your vitamin B6, that's vitamin B6 with hydrochloric acid. If you see cyanocobalamin next to vitamin B12, that's cyanide and cobalt combined. Folks, these vitamin and mineral fragments are just a part, not the whole, because we will never understand what's fully in food, which is why I need to teach you two concepts about nutrients. The first is called nutrient intelligence. It says this, the calcium that you get from your yogurt, kale, or almonds, when you eat them, knows to go into your body and get to your teeth and your bones where it belongs, but stay out of your kidneys, arteries, joints, and brain. Now, don't you all know somebody who has calcium stones in their kidneys, kidney stones? I bet you know someone who has arterial plaque that is calcification of the arteries, and I bet you know somebody who has calcium deposits on their joints or plaque in their brain that has calcium in it. Nutrient intelligence means that the vitamins and minerals in food are not alone. They're surrounded by a symphony of other vitamins, minerals, probiotics, enzymes, and amino acids that escort the vitamin or mineral into the cells of the body where they need to go instead of leaving them floating around to find their place. I learned this the hard way when we went into southern Missouri and found that our soil was very acidic. Now the best way in an organic operation to bring up acidic soil is to lime the fields, not with citrus fruit, but by calling Bob at the rock quarry and asking how much powdered limestone costs per ton. Fortunately for us, it was $15 a ton. That's $15 for 2,210 pounds. One to three tons per acre, and the microorganisms in the soil take this pulverized rock and ionize it, organize it, get it ready for the root system of plants to utilize so that animals and humans can eat it. We wouldn't skip all those steps and eat the rock, would we? Well, much of the limestone that I don't use goes to mineral manufacturers to become calcium carbonate and citrate, the number one and two sources of calcium in America today. So you see, our doctors tell us now to get 1,500 milligrams of calcium, and we ask them what kind, and they say it doesn't matter. But yet, we eat rock, and we've got stones in our kidneys, our arteries, our joints, and our brain. Folks, the widespread consumption of rock as calcium carbonate and citrate will not help our bones next decade. They will cause bone problems, heart problems, and many other Challenges. You've heard it now, you don't have to wait, but you can certainly hear me say I told you so in a decade. Folks, this is serious. Second concept about nutrition you need to know. It's not as catchy, it's you don't know what you don't know. You see, there's 19 B vitamins today, there used to be 12, but there used to be 8 before that 6, 4, 2, and 1. What if there's really 47? And what if B36 is the best? Are you going to wait for a guy in a lab coat to recreate B36 out of petroleum or some chemical, or you can get it from food. Hopefully the answer is food. I met a man by the name of Andrew Zelay three years ago. He's going to turn 90 this year, and he taught me more about vitamins and minerals in three hours than I had ever learned. You see, Andrew, who's a pharmacist by trade, emigrated to the United States from Hungary in the early part of the 1900s. Andrew studied under the great Nobel Prize winning scientist, Dr. Albert St. Gorgi who won a Nobel Prize by taking paprika or citrus and purifying 
and isolating this one compound called hexaronic acid, later renamed ascorbic acid, and mistakenly called vitamin C on your supplement label. St. Borgi won the Nobel Prize, but in a lecture that Andrew Zelay attended, he said, the further we got away from the food, the worse results my patients achieved. Zelay was determined, instead of working on purifying and isolating nutrients from food, he was going to put them back in. And in 37 years, he developed a process that replicated soil conditions where vitamin and mineral elements are transformed by microorganisms to usable nutrients. He did this in a controlled setting like hydroponics. And he was able to take minerals and vitamins and feed them to growing organisms or tiny plants. The problem is the plant wouldn't even be able to consume the vitamin or mineral without a code. In fact, when he put a mineral into these tiny plants, they died. These are the minerals we take in supplements today. But when he found a sequence of amino acids, a code, that caused the vitamin or mineral to make it into the cell structure of the plant, voila, he didn't have vitamin or mineral, he had a food that was rich in the vitamin. And if you look at selenium in this form, under a microscope, it would look identical to the selenium you find in a Brazil nut. Andrew Zelay had discovered the sequence or code by which every nutrient needed to get into the cell of a plant and later into the cell of a human. I asked Andrew, obviously being someone who wants to bring some great concepts to mankind, who in the United States has access to this? And when he said nobody, I said, well, that's going to change. And I also vowed to tell his story, which we did in a book called The Vitamin Code. Two and a half years ago, or nearly, we introduced this vitamin code concept to America. But it needed one last finishing touch. You see, organic is a movement that's kind of old news. I think organic's important, but let's face it. Organic used to only be in our four walls of health food stores. Now, people come up to you and say, I get organic milk at Target, Walmart, Bed Bath & Beyond, and the local cider <laughs> shop. And organics have that government seal on there, which means the government controls it. And some of us don't think the government has done a great job with other stuff they control. Organic is, is good, but there's something more healthy. There's something that's leading the way for food today, and it's raw food. And I'm not just talking about L.A., Miami, or New York, but man, I go to Oklahoma and go to a five-star raw food restaurant. I've been to Kansas and Iowa. Raw foods are being consumed more and more by people who are not only celebrities, actors, and athletes, but those that believe their health is their wealth. You see, raw is alive, it's energy. Let me ask you a question. If I offer you a choice between consuming an apple from a tree or applesauce made from that apple, which would you choose? Now, you may not know that when you peel an apple, you lose certain phytochemicals and a component of fiber that's very important. You may not realize that when you heat an apple, you lose all the enzymes and many of the water-soluble vitamins. You might not know that when you preserve it and pulverize it, you lose other things. Now, Monson Gerber doesn't want you to know that apple sauce is not the same as an apple, but you know it is. Raw is the ultimate expression of food. And I thought to myself, okay, we're going to introduce this great whole food vitamin concept, the vitamin code, but what if we could make it raw? So we worked with Andrew on his process to deliver the very first uncooked, untreated, unadulterated, raw food created nutrients with the code, and the vitamin code was born. I knew that that three-letter word raw would resonate with people. And in the last two and a half years, vitamin code has outsold all other major vitamin brands. More health food store owners, managers, more nutrition specialists and doctors take the vitamin code personally than any other product we've ever been a part of. And they have 1,500 vitamins and minerals to choose from. The vitamin code also breaks the myth that you take vitamins for insurance purposes. I mean, insurance is what I pay for every month and never see the benefits. And when I really need it, I have to beg to get it. Anything you take better make you feel differently or it's not working. We introduced the vitamin code, multiple vitamins, for men and for women. For men 50 and wiser, and women 50 and wiser. We have a vitamin code family for ages 6 and up. Vitamin code perfect weight for those who want to balance their weight and stress levels. We introduced vitamin code raw prenatal 
for expected moms. Vitamin code RAW1 for men and RAW1 for women for people who like once dailies. We have vitamin code RAW iron, RAW B12, RAW antioxidants, RAW B complex, RAW vitamin C, vitamin E, RAW calcium, and RAW vitamin D. And now we have two new vitamin code family members. The first is vitamin code liquid for those who don't want to take or can't swallow capsules or tablets. Vitamin code liquid has 45 superfoods, is the only liquid multivitamin with raw whole foods. But vitamin code liquid is better for what it doesn't contain. You see, every vitamin and mineral liquid contains a preservative called either sodium or potassium benzoate, which is really, really good on the 4th of July because that's what makes fireworks whistle when you light them. But can cause major, major problems in human beings by forming benzene, which if you want to be really depressed, look that up on the internet. Vitamin code liquid is the first chemical preservative-free liquid multivitamin combining apple cider vinegar and fats from the coconut as its only preservation system. So if you don't prefer to swallow capsules or tablets, vitamin code liquid will really give you that burst of energy. And vitamin code kids is the first children's multi that I've ever given my three children, ages six, three, and two. There are three things that bother me about most children's chewable multis. Number one, the colors. They may say natural in front of them, but natural coloring almost always contains propylene glycol, lighter fluid. Number two, sugar. Not a big fan. The average chewable children's multivitamin has six to eight grams of sugar. And number three, the vitamins and minerals themselves are from chemicals, and my kids will not be having that in their diet. Vitamin Coke kids, not to disappoint you, are bears that are white. They're uncolored, but just call them polar bears and it will be fine. One gram of sugar and a whole food, vitamins and minerals, and a probiotic to help your children's teeth, gums, and mouth. So vitamin code exists to give you nutrients, not from food, but as food. And I believe you'll experience huge improvements in your health. But vitamins and minerals aren't the only raw nutrients. Protein is pretty important. Now protein is a macronutrient that is derived from the Latin word proteus which means of primary importance. We know protein creates building blocks for our immune system, skin, hair, and nails, hormones. I've studied protein quite a bit in nature. And when I find good raw protein sources, they all contain four components. Undenatured or native amino acids, the building blocks of protein. They all contain enzymes to break the protein down for digestion. They contain fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K. We don't know why, but they all contain them, whether it's an avocado or a steak. And probiotics. Once again, we looked at what was out there, and since protein powders are popular, shouldn't they have what protein foods do? Well, they don't. So we created one called raw protein. You see, raw protein is unique because it's certified organic and raw. It's unique because it's vegan and gluten-free and dairy-free and soy-free. But it's more unique because this mild tasting 18 gram serving of protein comes from 14 sprouts containing powerful digestive enzymes, fat soluble vitamins A, D, E, and K from raw foods, and powerful probiotics to help you break down the protein that you're not able to. Raw protein is an amazing product that virtually anybody can consume. It's not allergenic like whey or soy or egg and approximates protein foods better than anything else. And we took that same great protein source and created the first raw organic meal replacement called Raw Meal. Raw Meal contains 33 grams of protein, 14 grams of fiber, and it's all raw, vegan, gluten-free, certified organic. I ate at a raw food restaurant in Oklahoma City that I mentioned. I left there being thoroughly, uh, you know, enjoying the meal, it was great but I also left with a $200 bill for four people. Now granted, my friends eat a lot of raw food ice cream, but folks, raw meal is not only potent and filling, but it's very affordable. In fact, if you don't eat breakfast and you, and you decide to take one serving of raw meal as your breakfast, you're gonna struggle to eat lunch, much less go to the uh, you know snack bar at work or the vending machine. Raw meal, raw protein, Vitamin and code are wonderful sources of raw nutrients that can make a difference in your life. But bottom line, when it comes to protein and vitamins and minerals in your diet, 
Food is where it starts. All of these other great things that we've created are supplements. But if you're going to eat raw food, you might as well supplement with it as well. And this is the only game in town. We're excited about that. And we hope that half of the health food store in the next decade will be comprised of these raw nutrients. Key number three to extraordinary health. Dive in to the ocean of wellness. I want to give you a health secret. Go home. Go on your computer, open up your search engine, and type in the words Nanook of the North. And as you watch clips of this 1922 silent film, if you're like me, you might realize that the answers to much of our health questions are right under our fingertips and about a hundred years in the rearview mirror of history. You see, Nanook of the North chronicles a man named Nanook and his villagers who were hunters and gatherers living in the harshest environments ever seen in places like Greenland, Iceland, Alaska, and northern Canada. This movie sent shockwaves throughout Europe and America even though it was a silent film because we've never seen people like this and we've never seen people living in climates this harsh. These individuals were known for two things, their extraordinary health and their crazy diet. The end of the North spawned dozens of researchers scientists and anthropologists to go from America and Europe to live and observe these people. Those that first observed them and their diet gave them the name Eskimo, which means eater of raw flesh, which is probably why we call them the Inuit today. Sounds a little more politically correct. These Eskimos lived in an environment where they derived virtually all their food from protein and fat, what they could catch in the ocean, on land, they had berries and bushes during the short summer season and moss underneath trees when they could dig beneath the snow. But primarily, animal food made the food pyramid pretty nervous today and even back then. One gentleman by the name of Wilhelmer Stefansson was a Swedish-born, Harvard-trained anthropologist. He went and lived and ate and studied these Eskimos. He didn't eat them. He ate like them. And this story is getting really weird. Stefansson wrote a book called My Life with the Eskimos, and he made the comment that during his 17 years of living with them, eating like them, he never saw one case of cancer, one case of heart disease. He didn't see any behavioral problems or mental issues. In fact, he said there wasn't even any crime. He remarked that the Eskimos didn't even have to lock their igloos at night before going to sleep. A little Eskimo humor, I thought I'd do. What was it that made these Eskimos healthy? Well, scientists in the last 88 years have believed they found the answer. And of course, Western science likes to crown one compound king overall. So they observed that the Eskimo diet of old, and even the Japanese diet of today, produced much better results than the North American diet. And they believed it was due to the consumption of long-chain polyunsaturated fatty acids, later shortened to N-3, now called omega-3 fats which everybody knows omega-3 fats are great, right? They're the darlings of health food stores, number one in sales. There's a pharmaceutical omega-3 now, and even the media likes them most of the time. Omega-3 fats, EPA and DHA, as well as others, help support the skin, the brain, the mood, the immune system, healthy inflammation, the heart, bones and joints. They're great. But what if I told you that omega-3s were never meant to be consumed alone? You see, further examination of the Eskimo diet of old and the Japanese diet of today reveals that in order to get the true benefits that the ocean has to offer, it's not just about the omega-3s, but it's about the vitamins and minerals and the two antioxidant compounds that always surrounded them at every meal. These two antioxidant compounds are called astaxanthin and fucoxanthin. Astaxanthin is the red pigment that makes salmon red, pink, or orange, and flamingos as well, but that's just a side note. Astaxanthin is wonderful for your brain. It's great for energy, endurance, your immune system, and your joints, and your heart, but in a different way than omega-3s. Astaxanthin is up to 600 times more potent than other antioxidants like vitamin C, beta carotene, and vitamin E. Astaxanthin is best known as an internal sunscreen. When you consume astaxanthin, you can be more resistant to the sun's UV rays. And I'm a huge fan of getting sunshine. 
The more you can get without burning, the better. Fucoxanthin is found in brown seaweed. Helps you burn fat and prevent fats from going rancid in your body, for lack of a better description. Fucoxanthin is 8.3 times more potent than vitamin E as an antioxidant. So when you sit down to a meal in Eskimo land, or, ja or Japan, you're eating fatty fish, you're eating seaweed salad or miso soup with seaweed floating in it, you're getting omega-3s, astaxanthin, and fucoxanthin. Take a fish oil capsule, you're getting just omega-3s. But this mash made in the sea has a synergy that's beyond what we've even studied. Because omega-3 fats are fragile, they will go rancid over time. They need to be combined with an antioxidant, and what better antioxidant than astaxanthin or fucoxanthin? Astaxanthin and fucoxanthin are known as fat-soluble antioxidants. They need a fat to be absorbed. Voila! Something that was always together in food that is being recombined. How do you get omega-3s, astaxanthin, and fucoxanthin in your diet? One of the best sources of omega-3s and astaxanthin is wild salmon. Sockeye salmon, by far the richest source of astaxanthin. I recommend you consume fresh, frozen, raw, cooked, poached, smoked salmon. In fact, sockeye salmon can be purchased in cans very affordably. I eat sockeye salmon a minimum of five times a week. I had some before I left uh, late morning today. I'll have it tomorrow. I brought it with me. It's the best source of omega-3s and astaxanthin combined. Seaweed, not such a big fan. You can get it. You can rehydrate it because it's dried. You can consume it in soups. A lot of people like it. I recommend you consume it. But, if you are not able to get omega-3s, astaxanthin, and fucoxanthin every day, I've got something for you. You see, I was going to sleep one night, and I couldn't sleep real well, and I thought, look, if Nanook and all his villagers and people around the world have consumed omega-3s, astaxanthin, and fucoxanthin, we should be able to put it together and make it easy for them. So a concept called Oceans 3 was born, where we took high-quality, pure and potent omega-3 fish oil, Combined it with astaxanthin and fucoxanthin, the same that you'd get in a meal of sockeye salmon and seaweed salad. We combined it, calling it Oceans 3, for the three critical components the ocean has to offer. We introduced Oceans 3 Beyond Omega-3 capsules, giving you all the omega-3s you need, plus the bonus of those powerful ocean-based antioxidants. Oceans 3 Beyond Omega-3 cod liver oil, which, believe it or not, tastes great. I know some of you have kind of bad memories of cod liver oil and grandma made me eat it and all that stuff. This is red in color and tastes wonderful. We also have Ocean's Kids for the little ones. My little two-year-old daughter will eat the whole bottle if I allow her. We have Ocean's Mom for expectant mothers and my two favorite formulas, Ocean's Three Healthy Hormones 